Michigan has a rich presence and a history of indigenous tribes and their cultures. However, much of that history is full of pain and trauma. Local 3's Brianna McLean sat down with an indigenous UP woman who recalls her life story so far and her experiences at a residential Indian boarding school. Then one day the black ropes came. It was then we could no longer use our Indian name. We were given a new name and look. They did all this while carrying a cross in a book. Linda Cobe was born in 1958 and grew up in Waters Meet, Michigan. Indigenous blood runs deep in her veins. Her father Ojibwa, her mother Oneida. There was a lot of alcoholism in the family. We, we were very poor. We, tar paper shacks, no running water or electricity, an outhouse. When Cobe was five years old, that's when everything changed. And then I remember the priest coming, I don't know if it was a priest or a brother, because there were a couple of different ones that would come and round us all up in the, uh, like towards the end of summer. And I guess we would, uh, all of us would try and uh, run out, scatter into the woods and try and hide behind trees and everything. And um, they would just wait there until we came out. And sometimes I guess they had bags of candy trying to entice us with that to get us into the car. Cobe was taken to Holy Childhood of Jesus, an Indian boarding school in Harbor Springs, Michigan. She spent one year at Holy Childhood, but the experiences she endured there will impact her for the rest of her life. The first few nights there, well, for the longest time, the night times were the worst for me because that's when everyone would start crying for their parents. Uh, you were manhandled, shoved, grabbed, yanked, pushed, shoved. You were uh, slapped. Uh, a lot, like cuffed to the back of the head or backhanded in the mouth or slapped in the face or or worse. And um, it really was a military, like run like a military boot camp. The nuns were so strict and um, everything had to be perfect. Indigenous children at Holy Childhood and at hundreds of other Indian boarding schools across the nation were stripped of their culture and heritage. Going to boarding school, they didn't indoc indoctrinate us like um, this is how you're going to be uh, a little white kid. Um, they didn't have to do that because the whole route, the entire route, daily routine was structured so that this is how Europeans live, you know, and clean and, and eat. This is how they eat. This is how they dress. This is what they learn, you know, which was a, a total different um, upbringing than what we would have gotten at home. My parents were, my dad was fluent in Ojibwa. He could speak m many languages but that was his first language. Cope left Holy Childhood in 1965 and returned home to her father and brothers in Waters Meet. The following summer, social services took Cope and her sister. They were placed into foster homes and adopted by white families in Barriga, Michigan. And that, that family I was with was always degrading to, about my father and my mother. Oh, he's just a drunk, your mother's a tramp, and uh, they really um, didn't want me de to have anything to do with my relatives. So my parents, uh, I think my father m might have came to see me visit us maybe two, three times during that whole period I was living with them. So my mom and dad pretty much uh, gave up their rights to us. Um, they didn't have the money, the resources to get their kids back. The family I was with, though, uh, our adopted dad was a bad alcoholic, and he started abusing my sister and I. As she got older, she returned to the reservation in Watersmeet to learn more about her indigenous culture that she lost so many years ago. I couldn't speak the language. I didn't know the customs, so you feel like you don't fit in. You don't fit in the white world because they look at you and they know, oh, there's an Indian woman. Uh, but you don't know what that means. So 
when you go back to the reservation then and then they look at you well why don't you know your culture and so you don't you feel like you don't fit in there and it's like where do you fit in and why are we here and who are you and uh, but those answers are coming um, the more I learn about my culture the more I, I, I feel like I'm getting my identity back and and um, and now I can use my education to help bring about awareness and and help other other victims of abuse Holy Childhood closed in 1983. And for Kobe, she is now 63 years old, living in Garnet, Michigan, with her husband and dog, Hudson. Although she still experiences intergenerational trauma to this day, she finds strength being the voice for her ancestors and other victims of abuse. It means we're, we're so resilient that our ancestors um, are still here walking with us and showing us the way and uh, bringing, us, bringing us back home. In Garnet, Brianna McLean, Local 3 News.